Hi guys, Marcus here, and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update, April 12, 2022. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. This is episode 524, and the rundown with timestamps is in the description box below. Now, because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, click CC for English subs. I create them myself. In today's episode, Yang Yang shares a couple of behind-the-scenes pictures, and it looks like he's been dragged through the mud, literally. Hookah's new upcoming drama and his inspiring comeback years ago. Ching Hao shares some survival tips for watching his drama. And my final thoughts on Under the Skin and The Oath of Love. But first, here's what's recently premiered, just the one drama for today and yesterday. A Year Without a Job is an upcoming modern drama starring Jackie Lee, Wan Peng, and Zai Zilu, and it premiered yesterday, April 11th. Wiki describes it as a story of two women, played by Jackie Lee and Wan Peng, who share the same name, who are equally unemployed, who live under the same roof, and who deal with their typical day-to-day -day struggles. The drama is slated for 24 episodes and is available on YouTube with English subs. And that's it for recently premiered dramas, moving on, some rap and booting updates. 20 Year Life On Season 2 has wrapped. On April 9th, Sina published some pictures of three of their lead actresses, Guan Xiaotong, Bu Guanqing, and Xu Mengjie, with their rap bouquets. According to Wiki, 20 Year Life On Season 2 is a continuation of Season 1, and showcases the problems the girls face in their careers after graduation. Season 1 came out in July 2020 and did well on viewing and popularity charts. Bootings now, Wrong Carriage, Right Groom is an upcoming costume drama starring Tian Xiwei and Ao Rui Peng, and they held their booting ceremony on April 10th. As Baidu explains it, the drama follows a young lady, played by Tian Xiwei, who's betrothed to a sickly young master, played by Ao Rui Peng. Due to a mix-up, she enters the wrong bridal carriage the day she is to be wed, but ends up clicking with the groom. The saying goes, it's okay to get into the wrong bridal carriage as long as you don't marry the wrong groom, something like that. Anyway, it's an idea that's been done many times before, but I guess as long as people keep enjoying it, producers are gonna keep recycling it. Next up for drama updates, here's one for those of you waiting for Who Rules the World. A WA article published yesterday shared pictures of Zhao Lusi feeding Yang Yang steamed buns, the two exuding couple feels. If you haven't heard, Who Rules the World announced their premiere date of April 18th a couple of days ago. Recently, some netizens posted photos of its two stars, Yang Yang and Zhao Lusi, during filming. In one of them, she's feeding him a steamed bun and he's looking at her tenderly. In another, the sunlight seemed to be in her eyes, and he stretches out his hand to block it for her. In another, he's piggybacking her as she holds an umbrella in the rain. And in yet another, they're joking around on set, all smiles. Netizens expressed excitement at these pictures, saying that the two stars are full of couple feels. Some also said that the show hasn't even aired, and they're already hooked. Staying on Yang Yang a little longer, he recently shared a couple of behind-the-scenes pictures from his drama Glory of Special Forces. This April has been labeled by some as the month of Yang Yang. Two of his highly anticipated dramas have either aired or will be airing. Who Rules the World will be airing on April 18th, whereas Glory of Special Forces aired last week on April 5th. In one of the scenes in Glory of Special Forces, Yang Yang's character rushes into a tunnel during a landslide rescue mission. On April 9th, Yang Yang shared a couple of behind-the-scenes pictures from that scene. The caption is, a muddy swallow that's just been rescued from the tunnel. As you can see, he's meticulously muddied up for the scene. His hair, his face, his costume. Good to see the level of commitment Yang Yang put into the role. He's definitely not just another pretty face who only does idol dramas. Lastly, for drama updates, Warm and Sweet recently released a trailer. Warm and Sweet is an upcoming modern drama starring Victoria Song and Michelle Chen. They started filming in Shanghai in February. 
As Stoban explains it, Victoria Song plays a plastic surgeon and Michelle Chen an interior designer. The two characters are best friends who start having marriage questions as they pass age 30. The male leads are portrayed by Lu Yi and Jing Chao. Recently, the drama released a four and a half minute trailer on social media, and in it, Victoria Song has five crying scenes in which she expresses grief and depression. Netizens praised the actress, leaving comments like, Victoria Song's acting skills have really improved. Watching her cry makes me want to cry. And Victoria Song's crying scenes are very infectious, very good. Next up is a segment on Hookah and his new drama. But before we get to that, a quick word on ExpressVPN. Now, whether I'm at home or traveling, the first thing I do before I surf the net is log on to ExpressVPN and connect to a server. Not only do I use ExpressVPN to protect my data from spies and hackers, I find it especially useful to unblock geo-restricted content like dramas and movies on YouTube, Netflix, WeTV, and other websites. ExpressVPN is giving away 3 extra months free on a 12-month plan to all viewers of my channel. All you have to do is use the link in the description below, expressvpn.com forward slash Marcus here. Moving on, Hookah. Here's a recent WA article talking about the official announcement of Hookah's new drama titled Bright Future. Produced by Daylight Entertainment, who are behind some of my favorite Chinese dramas of all time like Nirvana and Fire and All Is Well, Bright Future announced their lead cast lineup yesterday. Headlining the drama are Hookah, Wu Yue, Huang Lei, and Li Guangjie. There will be special appearances by Steven Zhang, Wang Xiao, Liu Tao, and others. The cast list has been labeled by Chinese media as, quote, a luxurious lineup of three generations, old, middle, and young, close quote. According to Baidu, Huke will portray Mei Xiaoke, a magistrate in Guangming County, who is tasked to promoting reforms like protecting the environment and optimizing education. It is reported that the drama started filming last month, will film for six months, and is slated for 30 episodes. This will be Hookah's second collaboration with director Kong Sheng, their first being 2015's Nirvana and Fire. In 2006, Hookah's career was on the rise, but tragedy struck when he got into a terrible car accident and sustained multiple injuries. Some of the scars are still visible on his face till today. He received over a hundred stitches and underwent skin grafting surgery. His assistant, who was with him at the time, unfortunately did not make it. The healing process took a while, but eventually Huka returned to the silver screen, and many would argue he returned even stronger. He reached new heights with his performance in Nirvana and Fire. His character, Mei Changsu, was one he shared similarities with. After surviving a massacre, Mei Changsu spends years recovering, regains his strength, and re-emerges with a new face to torment his enemies. Many consider Nirvana and Fire an untouchable classic in Chinese drama land. I can concur with that notion. Part of why I admire Huka is not just because of his performances in his dramas and movies, it's also because of his inspiring comeback and the strength and courage he showed to overcome the physical and mental trauma he went through. Next up, Ching Hao has a message for viewers of Left Right, a family modern drama in which he stars with Ren Susi. Left Right premiered a couple of days ago when Wiki describes it as a story about the entanglements and choices made by an ex-couple whose daughter suffers from leukemia. Recently, Ching Hao shared survival tips for watching the drama, particularly for male viewers. Apparently, a large number of netizens aren't very happy with his character, Xiao Lu, calling him irritating. Ching Hao said, When watching the drama with your partner, male compatriots, try not to talk back or discuss. Be a good servant and deeply reflect on your own inadequacies. Female compatriots, please stay in a happy mood. If you can't help but be in a bad mood, you can take it out on Xiao Lu. Lastly, I hope you will enjoy watching the drama during this pandemic period and have a harmonious family. Netizens responded to his message by saying they're already taking it out on Xiao Lu. 
And on that note, it's Tuesday today, so time for another segment of Where's Marcus At? So the title of the segment doesn't refer to where I'm at physically, it refers to where I'm at in the dramas I'm following. But before I get to them, I want to first give my final thoughts on two dramas that I finished watching this past week. The first is Under the Skin starring Tan Jian Shi and Jing Shijia. It's a crime drama I watched on IQ.com and it featured an array of interesting and complex cases. Most of them were murder cases and featured a female in distress or one who was ill-treated. And what I like about these cases is that they were well-written, not your cliched or run-of-the-mill ones. I also liked the relationship curve between the two lead characters and how they complemented each other. They balanced each other out, yin and yang, one's more direct, the other more introvert. Both actors did a great job. I also want to give props to the props department who had massive input to the drama. The only knock I have for the drama is that I had to really suspend my disbelief at how good Tan Jian Chi's character, the portrait artist, was. He was drawing exact matches of people who were wearing masks, people at a future age, etc. It was quite incredible. Overall though, I enjoyed the drama and it very well could be this year's sleeper hit. There seems to be one or two every year. As of today, it has a 7.4 rating out of over 205,000 ratings on Douban. Personally, I'd give it a 7.5. The other drama I finished watching this week is The Oath of Love starring Yang Zi and Xiao Chan. I watched that on Wee TV. While Under the Skin is a dark thriller, The Oath of Love is anything but. The Oath of Love is a light-hearted drama about familial relationships, friendships, and of course, romantic relationships. And while the love story might not be anything out of the ordinary, the two stars sparkle. She's a dream-chasing cellist, he's a straight-laced physician, and while they might seem completely different from each other in the beginning, it was clear they were perfect for each other in the end. I think one of the best things about this drama was the chemistry between the two lead characters. Another is Yang Zi's character's relationship with her father. She wants the freedom to chase her dreams while he's a disciplinarian. The drama is an endearing rom-com with a happy ending, so if that's the type of drama you enjoy, perhaps give it a shot. As of today, the drama doesn't have a rating on Douban yet, which I find peculiar and don't know why. If I had to rate it, would give it a 7.0. If I were a bigger fan of the genre, would probably rate it much higher. And with that out of the way, I am currently not following any Chinese dramas. I'm keeping my plate clear for Who Rules the World, which is premiering imminently, and also The Wind Blows from Longxi, which is rumored to premiere soon. Looking forward to those. As for non-Chinese dramas, I'm on episode 5 of Pachinko starring Kimi Na and Lee Min Ho. It's available on Apple TV. I'm on episode 9 of Severance starring Adam Scott and Britt Lower. That's also on Apple TV. And I'm on season 2, episode 3 of Ozark starring Jason Bateman and Laura Linney. That's available on Netflix. And that's been another segment of Where's Mark is At? It also brings us to the end of this episode. This show wouldn't be possible without you guys tuning in, so I thank you all for your support. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar more a month, you'll have access to perks like recaps, requests, and have your questions answered. So stay safe, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers!